So this is a basic um, example of a JSON file and you can create one in Dreamweaver by creating new and then choosing JavaScript <coughs> create and if you save as and change the extension to dot JSON um, then that should be ok and it will open fine there's no preset for JSON um, in CS6 at least Ok, so in this example you'll see that um, the document starts and ends with um, a squared bracket and each value inside of the object um, is surrounded by curly brackets and they're separated by commas and within these you can have different properties that have to be consistent across each set there, so for instance all of these have got first name, last name and a URL. And we can add an additional one just by putting a comma and then in curly brackets adding in the above information and changing it. So right, put My email address, a yeah, croquette at madeupdomain.com. Clearly, that's not a real. Well, um, this example will only work on the server, and um, you can't do this locally. Um, okay, so the pass file is a little bit more complex because there's a few different principles going on here. The first one is that we're using XML HTTP request which if you've done some reading earlier on on Code Academy you will have found out a little bit about this. Um, it's basically a way of loading data from XML files or from JSON files or even just to load other HTML files um, and this can happen outside of the usual header request so that means you can you can request at any point in time um, on command so I've created a variable for the new request which is XHR it stands for XML HTTP request and then I've set the URL for that to equal the employees file that I've just created and uploaded and then we've got a function which runs when the XML HTTP request is ready and not beforehand. So it checks that everything's OK and it's ready to run. And if that's the case, then I've sent a message to the JavaScript console to say that everything's ready. Then I've passed the response text which has come through from that file and I've saved it to my R which is stands for my array to be honest and there's a function called my function my array which then handles the information within that array and so this is basically an extension of one of the last examples you would have looked at on Code Academy beyond that if it doesn't work then console logs that it's not ready that something's gone wrong we then open the stream um, to set, say that we want to get the file which is linked in URL there which is stored in the same folder as this file which is why we've got no path beyond the file name itself and then true um, says that we are loading this asynchronously rather than synchronously um, and that is a recommendation now and because we're loading in this manner we have to run this function here to check that everything's ready before we start handling it otherwise nothing will happen so as I mentioned this function my function handles what's going on when the JSON file has been passed so that's what we see here 
And basically we've created a variable called output which is empty to start off with. We've created a variable called i which is empty at zero at this point in time. And then we run a for loop. So whilst the value of i is less than the length of the array, this will run. And that number will keep on getting bigger until this is not true. And once that is not true, it will no longer run. And the first part there, i equals zero, just initiates it basically, initiates the value and says that it starts at zero. So then we know where we're going from. And what we're doing with the plus equals is we're adding some HTML to the output variable um, and then we'll be able to use this. So the handwritten HTML comes between brackets, um, in this case inverted uh, comma as opposed to speech marks. And this is the start of an A tag. We then close that and we rely upon the value of the URL. So if I just flick back to the JSON file you will see that I've set a property called URL in each one of these and then there is a value there so this value will then be outputted inside of the a tag and then the first name and the last name will be displayed and then we close the tag put a line break in between so it's nice and clean Just maybe change that to the next html tag and after that we then find the element id01 and we change the inner html to equal what is in the output variable and just looking down in the body you'll see there's just one element and that is the div with the id id01 so once that has been loaded that will be amended to contain the information that comes from the json file and so if I can just find this file and just one small error there um, and that's because I've been changing the variable names from XML HTTP to XHR so it's a shorter name I just forgot to do those two there so that should be ok now and there we go a list of names with mail to um, links, if I click on those links then it would open up my um, email client of choice which I don't actually want to send and that will be the end of that example